poverty and hunger are closely linked. Claire Bloom knows this better than many. She retired from the U.S. Navy only to take on a new cause, fighting child hunger. She founded a group called N68 Hours of Hunger, and I began by asking her what that means. Well, End 68 Hours of Hunger refers to the 68 hours of hunger that some American school children experience between the free lunch they get in school on Friday and the free breakfast they get in school on Monday, and it equates to 68 hours during which they are hungry on the weekend. Well, it's not just a problem here in the United States. Around the world, nearly half of all deaths in children under the age of five are caused by poor nutrition. That's three million children a year. And here in the U.S., how hard is it to make sure that children don't go hungry? Well, we have 16 million children in America who experience hunger every day. That's one in five. And you can see on this map of the United States where they're primarily located, those areas where there is the darkest green, there are about 33 to 35 percent of the children in those areas of the country experience hunger on a regular basis. So it's a tremendous problem in this country and um, it came to my attention really by accident as I discovered that there were children in my own town who were experiencing hunger and decided I had to do something about it. I want to bring up some more statistics regarding child hunger. One out of six children in developing countries is underweight. 66 million primary school age children go to school hungry in the developing world with 23 million in Africa alone. Asia is the continent with the most hungry people, two thirds of the world total. Are there lessons learned here in the United States that can be translated to some of those areas? Um, yeah, we're talking about roughly, third, roughly 16 to 17 percent of the nation um, where there is food insecurity. And, of course, my primary concern is the children, because if we don't feed the children, they can't possibly grow up to be healthy, productive adults. So it's in the community's interest to get them fed when they're young. It seems like such a tough problem to fix. Should we be hopeful? And what can people do to help? What sort of response have you seen with your organization? Well, we're a 100% volunteer organization, and so we've seen a terrific response from the community. But in terms of what people can do in areas where a program like mine does not exist, are simply to get food into the hands of the teachers, the guidance counselors, and the nurses in the school system in their local area so that they have food to give to these children to take home on the weekends. Virtually every guidance counselor, nurse, and teacher in this country takes food to school to give to their students and they pay for it out of their own pockets. So that's one of the biggest things that people can do. Obviously, I'm looking for people all over this country to start programs in their own local areas. I've talked to people internationally as well. Uh, for example, there are a million hungry children in Canada and that's a country like the European countries that has a great social web to take care of problems like that. And despite that, there are a million hungry children there. And the problems in Africa and the developing countries are just incredible. All right, Claire Bloom, founder and executive director of End 68 Hours of Hunger. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure.